All right, let's look at what happened in the first season of Bridgerton. Okay, picture it. London, 1813. The social season is about to begin for London's high society. We are focused on a few noble families living in Grosvenor Square. Our narrator for the season is one Lady Whistledown, voiced by the iconic Julie Andrews. Whistledown is the author of a scandal sheet reporting on all the latest gossip in the ton. First, we meet the Bridgertons. Dowager Viscountess Violet Bridgerton is the matriarch of this family and preparing her eldest daughter Daphne for her debut. She has eight children total, and you can tell the birth order by their initials, as each was named alphabetically from Anthony to Hyacinth. At the same time, the Featheringtons across the street are preparing their three daughters as well. Lady Portia Featherington is mother to Prudence, Philippa, and Penelope. It will be Penelope's debut, though she wants to wait another year like her best friend Eloise Bridgerton, but her mother refuses. The High Society gathers at the palace for the presentation of the debutantes to Queen Charlotte, who looks quite bored. Prudence ends up fainting in front of the Queen. When Daphne is presented, the Queen shows her approval and calls her flawless, setting her up to be the season's incomparable, a fancy way of saying the most popular. Anthony is the oldest Bridgerton, and must act in his late father's stead, organizing a match for Daphne, though he is a bit distracted by a fling with an opera singer named Sienna. Now we introduce Simon, aka the Duke of Hastings. I'll give you a moment to just take him in. The Duke's father died, and he has returned to handle the affairs. Lady Danbury, a friend of his late mother's, greets him and convinces him to reluctantly come to her ball that evening. The Featheringtons are introduced to a distant cousin named Marina Thompson, who has come to participate in the season. Lady Featherington is not happy about the competition. At the ball, Anthony refuses to let Daphne dance with any of the eligible men. Simon and Daphne have a meet-cute where she literally runs into him, and he assumes she did it on purpose. She discovers the Duke is an old friend of Anthony's and judges him. Marina proves to be very popular. As the season continues, Anthony has managed to scare away all of Daphne's prospects save for Baron Nigel Burbrook, a squirrely guy that just instantly gives you the creeps. Meanwhile, Marina has many suitors knocking down her door. At the opera, Violet and Lady Danbury hatch a plan to set up Daphne and the Duke using the age-old bait of gooseberry pie. They arrange for the Duke to join the Bridgertons for dinner, and he finds the family entertaining as he'd never experienced a big-loving family before. Daphne seems to impress him with her wit, and sparks begin to fly. That evening, when Violet confronts Anthony about ruining Daphne's season, he says the Duke will never marry, and she reveals she knows about Sienna, and it is time he take his duty seriously. So Anthony breaks up with Sienna, who doesn't take it well. Over in the Featherington house, Marina is very offended by her sheets. At the next party, the Duke and Daphne make eyes at each other throughout the night. Cressida Cowper purposely spills her drink on Penelope, but Colin shuns Cressida to dance with Penelope instead. At the Featherington house, the sheets are at it again, but this time telling the maid and Lady Featherington that Marina could be with child. When confronted, Marina admits it but hurls insults, so Lady Featherington slaps her. Back at the party, Anthony tells Daphne he has matched her with Burbrook. She refuses and storms off. We see her pacing in the garden when Burbrook finds her. She says she will never marry him, and he advances on her. The Duke is passing by and overhears the argument. Burbrook attacks, and the Duke swoops in just in time to see her punch the squirrely dude right in the face. Appalled that Daphne should even have to consider that guy, the Duke suggests they pretend to be courting. This would get the mothers off his back and make Daphne more desirable again. Daphne agrees, and they re-enter the party hand in hand. Violet and Lady Danbury exchange knowing glances. Now we have some flashbacks where we see Simon's tragic beginnings. After a difficult childbirth, his garbage human being of a father celebrates having a son while leaving Lady Danbury to be at Sarah's side while she passes. As a child, Simon develops a stammer and his father disowns him. Lady Danbury seeks Simon out and oversees his proper education. She takes him to see his father to show his progress, and the man is just the worst, still rejecting him. Back at the present, the Queen is growing frustrated by Lady Whistledown and decides to take action inviting Violet Bridgerton for a private tea. The Featherington girls have learned of Marina's predicament because she's being confined to her room. 
Penelope and Eloise go on a mission to find out how pregnancy happens. They are denied information at every turn until Penelope finally goes to the source and asks Marina herself. Marina shares that she fell in love with a boy named George who went off to war. She tells Penelope that love caused her pregnancy, and she sends a letter to George with Penn's help. Simon and Daphne continue their ruse making public appearances, Violet and Lady Danbury looking quite pleased with themselves. The next morning, Daphne has a line of suitors waiting to see her. Anthony shows up with Burbrook and kicks everyone out. At yet another party, Daphne and the Duke dance happily. Anthony pulls Simon to the side and they argue about his intentions. Burbrook enters the argument and is so smug that Simon can't hold his tongue anymore and reveals how Burbrook got his black eye. Horrified, Anthony calls off the agreement and tells Burbrook to stay away from his sister. Leaving the party, Burbrook confronts Simon, who tries to dismiss him. Burbrook asks why he hasn't proposed, suggesting he's already had Daphne. Simon warns him, but then Burbrook brings up his father and Simon lets him have it. The next day, they are at a picnic when a mangled Burbrook shows up with a special marriage license and threatens to soil Daphne's name if they break the agreement. Anthony is prepared to challenge him to a duel, but Daphne realizes it is the entire family's reputation at stake, not just hers, and resolves to marry the vile man. At tea with the queen, Violet gets an idea on how to save the situation. She invites Burbrook's mother over and tasks her maids with finding out all the dirt on the man. They do so, and the women start the rumor mill abuzz with the information that Burbrook has an illegitimate child with a maid and he doesn't support them. Once it reaches Whistledown, Burbrook is forced to skip town and Daphne is free to find a better match. She tells the Duke she wants to take charge of her own life and he agrees to help, finally asking her to call him Simon. The chemistry between them is at an all-time high. As Simon watches Daphne dancing with another man, we flash back to him going to his father's deathbed. His father finally said he was proud of the man Simon had become and that the Hastings line would continue but Simon tells him he only returned to make a vow. He says that he will never marry, that he will never sire an heir, and that the Hastings line will end with him. Daphne's prospects continue to grow as she rejects three proposals. The queen brings in her nephew, the Prince of Prussia, to liven things up a bit. Daphne dances with many of the eligible bachelors, including Boasty Pants, Mama's Boy, and of course, Lord Floofburns, but none of them measure up. The Duke and Daphne continue to banter about the game that they all play, laughing at Cressida and the Prince, though Daphne does catch his eye. At an art exhibit, the Prince attempts to get Daphne's attention, but she is too distracted by the Duke. She finds him staring at his mother's favorite painting, which she also likes. As she describes the feelings it gives her, their hands slowly move together. Lady Danbury helps Benedict stick his foot in his mouth in front of Henry, an established artist. The queen grows frustrated by the prince's lack of success with Daphne and tells him to be a prince and charm her. Benedict gets frustrated with his art and Eloise chastises him for not pursuing his passion more, jealous that as a man it's an option for him. He asks her if she is Lady Whistledown. She denies it, but adds she wouldn't tell him if she was. Lady Featherington takes Marina to a poorer part of town to show her her future if she doesn't accept a proposal. It doesn't work as Marina sees them as hardworking people not to be looked down upon. She insists on waiting for George to respond to her letter. After dreaming of the Duke gets her hot and bothered, Daphne asks him for details on the physical aspects of marriage. Simon laughs at her naivety, but then guides her on methods of self-pleasure. Lady Danbury urges Simon to propose, saying it's not fair to Daphne who could match with the prince if he isn't going to marry her. The next day, an unsuspecting Daphne is heartbroken when Simon tells her their agreement is done. He says it has succeeded and it's time to move on. Even claiming they were never actually friends, he is totally white fanging her here. Anthony tries to get back with Sienna, but she turns him away, saying his position hasn't changed and she needs someone she can count on. Penelope brings Marina a letter from George. They open it excitedly, but Marina's face falls. It says he wants nothing to do with her. As she sobs in the next room, Lady Featherington and the maid discuss their forgery of the letter and why it was for Marina's own good. Violet encourages Anthony to explore his own prospects for marriage at the next ball. The Featheringtons enter and Marina is immediately asked to dance. Lady Danbury calls the Duke foolish when she realizes what he has done. 
Daphne makes a grand entrance, instantly attracting the prince's attention. The queen now looks very satisfied with herself, and even Whistledown says, why settle for a duke when you could have a prince? The prince gives Daphne a gorgeous necklace and says she is perfection itself. Back at the house, Anthony says the prince plans to propose, but he learned his lesson and is leaving the choice up to Daphne. A novel concept. Eloise becomes preoccupied with finding out Whistledown's true identity. Lady Featherington is shopping Marina around to old men who desire an heir and won't ask many questions. They're all shocked when Albion Finch arrives to court Philippa. Simon tells Will he's leaving town, but Will reminds him that he's needed for the upcoming fight, so Simon reluctantly stays. Daphne attends the fight with the prince, and he says all the right things, but Daphne remains distracted by Simon's presence. Later, Violet asks her daughter about the Duke, and Daphne comes clean about the ruse. At a big luxurious party, Colin saves Marina from another dance with the old man, and she sets her eyes on him. Meanwhile, Lord Featherington has a talk with Albion Finch, and Philippa runs to her mother in tears. The prince seems on the verge of proposing, and Daphne panics, fleeing to the garden for some air. Simon shows up, wanting to say goodbye properly. He asks if she will be happy with the prince. She says, of course, she will be a princess. They argue, and she leaves. He follows her through the hedges, and when he catches her, he pulls her into an embrace. He backs off quickly, apologizing, but she passionately kisses him. Anthony walks by and breaks it up, saying Simon must marry Daphne now. He continues to refuse, so Anthony challenges him to a duel at dawn. Why is this dude's go-to move always a duel? Benedict visits Henry the artist and finds new inspiration for his own work. Lady Featherington goes through her husband's study and finds he has gambled away all their money, including the girl's dowries. When she confronts him, he just cries into her shoulder. Marina excitedly tells Penelope she thinks she can get Colin to propose, not knowing Penelope's had a crush on him for some time. Her heartbreak causes Penn to lash out at Eloise, saying she has real, mature problems. Anthony pays Sienna a visit, asking her to run away with him, as he's now either dead or in exile, and she takes him to her bed. The men arrive for the duel and begin. Daphne realizes that Cressida saw them in the garden and rides to stop the duel. She arrives just as Anthony shoots, causing the horse to throw her. She tells them about Cressida, and Simon continues to refuse marriage. She asks Simon what the reason could possibly be. He finally tells her he knows she wants a big family, and he cannot give her children, and she deserves all her heart's desires. They start to resume, but Daphne says there's no need. She and the Duke will be married, meaning she is accepting a childless future. Daphne tells her mother of her betrothal. They seek a special marriage license, but are denied because the Queen is cross at her nephew's rejection, even though the Prince visits Daphne and wishes her well. Simon spends most of the time drunk or hung over, barely able to look at Daphne. Both are now awkward and hesitant around each other. Anthony visits Sienna, only to find she's already gone. Lady Featherington tells her husband the modiste won't deliver any more dresses until the account is paid, and is truly scandalized when he suggests they wear dresses they already own. <gasps> Colin visits Marina, and Penelope intrudes, talking about his plans to travel. Wedding preparations begin, and Daphne's maid Rose is overwhelmed. Cressida acknowledges that she indeed saw them in the garden that night, but Daphne reminds her that she is about to be a duchess. Violet and Lady Danbury discuss the license refusal and make a plan for them to appeal directly to the Queen. Benedict attends a subversive party at Henry's place. He meets local modiste, Madame Delacroix, and catches a glimpse of Henry in a compromising position before partaking in the debauchery himself. Lady Featherington orders Marina to stop wasting her time with Colin when he's too young and would take too long to wed. Penelope hears Marina ask for a few more days, suggesting she can seduce him and force the situation. The Queen is told the King is having a lucid moment, and we get a chance to see the loving relationship they once had. They reminisce a little before he asks about their late daughter, and he becomes confused and belligerent, the heartbreak obvious on the Queen's face as she leaves. Simon and Daphne appear before her. Daphne begins to talk about love at first sight, but Simon interrupts and spills the whole truth. He makes a lovely speech about how they grew a friendship and it was the prince's arrival that made him see he wanted more. The queen sees the wisdom in friendship as a foundation of marriage and grants their request. The couple have an intimate wedding ceremony and a large party at the Bridgerton house afterward. 
During the party, Henry talks to Benedict about the other night, and he assures him discretion. The queen overhears Eloise accuse Lady Danbury of being Whistledown, and tasks her with finding the real identity for her. Marina gets Colin alone and tries to seduce him. He stops her, ever the gentleman, but ends up proposing anyway. They decide not to announce it yet, because it's Daphne's big day. Overwhelmed by the constant talk of children, Daphne retreats to her room. Violet finds her and decides it's time to have the talk about what she should expect on her wedding night. Daphne has many questions, but her mother talks in constant metaphors and leaves her with nothing but autumn rain and basset hounds as visuals. Helpful, mom. They spend their wedding night at an inn where Simon has booked separate rooms. After much pacing by both parties, they finally come together and start actually talking. Turns out both feel like they trapped the other, and both burn for the other as well. They give in to their passions, and Simon gently guides her through their first intimate time together. She ends the night saying she feels wonderful. The new duchess arrives at the Duke's estate of Cliveden, and they begin their honeymoon period, which involves consummating their relationship in every part of the house. Seriously, in the bedroom, in the study, on the library shelves, in the rain, by the lake, you name it, they did it there. Daphne attempts to impress the head housekeeper, Mrs. Coulson, but that's no easy task. She upsets the villagers by declaring the pig contest a tie, and Simon realizes his steward has been mismanaging things while he was away. Colin announces his engagement to Marina, surprising everyone. The Featheringtons invite the Bridgertons for dinner to celebrate the couple's arrangement. While Prudence tortures the family with her singing, Penelope corners Colin and tries to warn him that Marina's in love with someone else, but he dismisses her. Marina tells him she feels unwanted, and they make plans to secretly elope to Scotland. Daphne has a talk with Mrs. Coulson and discovers details about Simon's upbringing. After the next dalliance, she comes to realize he is withdrawing on purpose to avoid pregnancy. She thought he had an affliction causing infertility. After getting more details from Rose, she makes a plan. During their next romp, she takes control and proves he is capable. They fight, Daphne saying cannot and will not are two different things, and Simon saying she said he was enough. They are both left feeling angry and betrayed. Colin sneaks down the stairs ready to leave for Scotland, but finds his mother holding a copy of the latest Whistledown. Marina is greeted with the same from Lady Featherington. Whistledown has revealed Marina's situation to all. Daphne and Simon are at odds, but she gets news of her brother's scandal and they head to London to help. Colin is still in love with Marina and doesn't want to believe the gossip. Anthony refuses to allow them to meet, but Daphne uses her newfound status to arrange a meeting and act as chaperone. Marina admits it's true, but says she did what she thought she must. Colin says he really did love her and would have helped her if she had been honest. Simon lets off some steam with his buddy Will. Later, he returns to Daphne and they give in to desires for a moment, but he abruptly stops. He tells her if she is with child, he will support them both, but they will be married in name only. At her luncheon, the queen summons Eloise and demands she work faster to uncover Whistledown. Eloise wants to force the author to repair the reputations of her brother and the Featheringtons. Unmoved, the queen actually has the Featheringtons removed from the luncheon. Cressida laughs about it, but Daphne shuts her down. Violet finds Daphne alone and asks what's going on. Daphne chides her mother for her lack of education in reality. Later, Daphne goes to see Marina and apologizes for judging her. She suggests they try to find George, as he should not get to choose her future. Lord Featherington meets with Will and suggests that he purposely lose the next fight and they will split the winnings. Will is offended at first, but the large sum of money would make a huge difference for his family. Daphne is invited to attend Lady Danbury's soiree for married women, which she calls the Den of Inequity. There is much drinking and gambling, but Daphne uses the time to bond with a general's wife who could help find George. Meanwhile, at the boys' club, Simon and Anthony are somber. They begin to argue, and things turn nasty quickly, leading to them trading blows. When Daphne returns home, she sees an injured Simon and helps him nurse his wounds. In this moment, he finally reveals his vow to his father is why he refuses to have children, and it cannot be undone. Daphne is shocked that this is all a token of revenge against a dead man. She says he made a vow to her too, 
And if his hatred for his father outweighs his love for her, then he is right. It cannot be undone. Still on the case, super sleuth Eloise now believes Whistledown must be a tradesperson. She reports this to the Queen, who is unimpressed, and has hired proper investigators who will find and unmask her. Eloise grabs a ride with Benedict, surprised when he stops to pick up Madame Delacroix. She suddenly realizes that the modiste could in fact be Whistledown. Desperate, Marina makes a tea to try and undo her situation. Penelope finds her passed out on the floor. During the concert, Daphne realizes that her courses have come and she is not pregnant. She cries with her mother as Simon ignores them. Feeling like her plan worked, Marina packs up to go home. She tells Penelope that someday Colin will see how good she is to him. Lady Featherington manages an invitation out of Daphne before they are told someone is arriving at the Featherington house. Hoping it's George, Daphne rushes back with them. Turns out it is George's brother, Philip. Unfortunately, George died in battle, but his brother wishes to honor George's intention to marry Marina. Believing it no longer necessary, she declines. Eloise goes to Madame Delacroix, believing her to be whistled down. She suggests a retraction is in order. She is so busy with her agenda, she doesn't even notice her brother coming down the back staircase. At the fight, Will decides to take up Lord Featherington on his offer to secure his family's future. Lord Featherington uses the deed to his house to make a bet with these sketchy-looking dudes. Anthony makes eyes at Sienna across the room and ends up under the bleachers with her. Afterwards, he asks her to come to his sister's ball with him. Simon can tell Will took a dive and confronts him, asking about his honor. Will asks what could be more honorable than taking care of your family. Meanwhile, Daphne finds the unopened letters that young Simon wrote to his father. Lady Danbury finds her and explains how she helped Simon see what he was always capable of, urging Daphne to do the same. Excited to have money again, the Featheringtons splurge on new dresses for the ball. Daphne asks Simon to join her family to welcome home her sister Francesca. He is wonderful with her younger siblings. As everyone gets ready for Daphne's ball, Marina feels something and they call a doctor, confirming she is still pregnant and making her reconsider Philip's offer of marriage. As Lady Featherington ushers her daughters into the ball, Lord Featherington is taken to a special room at the brothel, where the sketchy dudes are waiting for him. Penelope talks to Colin, who thanks her for trying to warn him about Marina. She is about to tell him about her feelings for him when he reveals he's leaving for Greece. Anthony shows up to pick up Sienna for the ball, and she rejects him, not willing to change who she is for him. Eloise attempts to speak with the queen, but her servant tells her they are capturing Whistledown that very night. She flatters him until he reveals their whole plan to her. Anxious to save Whistledown, Eloise goes to Ben, who blows her off. She then commandeers a carriage and heads to the printers, showing up just in time to warn Whistledown, who barely escapes capture. Violet speaks with Daphne again, but this time she offers real advice, saying that the key to her wonderful marriage was that they chose to love each other every single day, a choice it's never too late to make. Daphne and Simon come together. She talks to him about his childhood. Rain breaks up the ball. She tells him that just because something is not perfect does not mean it is not worthy of love. Your father was wrong. And they make up. Lady Featherington arrives home to find the police there with the news that her husband has been killed. A quick trip to the study reveals all the money is gone as well. As the family says goodbye to Colin, Anthony announces he intends to find a wife, but will take love out of the equation. Eloise comforts Penelope over the loss of her father then speaks with Ben and realizes that Madame Delacroix had left the country and couldn't be Whistledown. While Eloise is still in the dark, we find out that Whistledown has actually been Penelope Featherington all along. A glimpse in the future shows the birth of Daphne and Simon's first son, whose name will begin with an A. As Simon says, after all, we do have our family traditions, do we not? And that's where we end season one, of Bridgerton. Thank you for your patronage, dear watcher. If you liked this recap, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.